make this work. Thank you, God. Good morning, Doc. Uh, good morning, guys. That's it. Little victories. How are you, Doc? You. Yep. <laughs> Damn, I feel like I missed out, missed the boat because I, I got vaccinated so long ago and now I'm reading in the States that they're they're giving away beer and gift certificates if you go get vaccinated. <laughs> you gotta go get back again. I gotta re hey Doc, can we just start there like with the booster? Um, because I know we've had you on before, but just if you could clarify, right? So these uh, vaccinations that we got, how long uh, does the science say we're good for? And what do we know about having to take the shot yearly? I think it's going to come down to a yearly, just like a flu vaccine. So I think we start our vaccine in December. So whoever again December would be, again, get the booster in December. You know, it's not a firm thing yet, but uh, it looks like it's going to be rolled out that way. So, so does that mean um, that, that every year we're going to have a similar effort to what we're seeing now where we, you know, mobilize at the University of Guam Calvo Fieldhouse or, you know, at, at the clinic level? Or is it going to be kind of uh, on everyone? Because, you know, like with the flu vaccine, right? I mean, not everyone takes it. And when they do take uh, it, they go to the clinic to take it. Yeah, you know, um, that's something that, Oh, I have asked public health to see that we can sit down and uh, plan ahead of time. You know, we need to plan the, in December already yeah. uh, rather than wait to December and start do the planning. Right. You know, just because I think we have to do a lot um, of, um, um, we have to approach this a different way uh, that we have to group people in, um, in, in certain, um, you know, maybe twice a month you can do this, but uh, you cannot be open your G uh, every day uh, for the next one year. Yeah. You know, it's impossible. It's going to drain um, the guard a whole lot. So we have to approach a different way, plan it, um, to group people. So remember, you can be, you know, um, about three to four weeks late um, of your shot. So, but you have to um, to kind of um, make the announcement earlier, you know, several months earlier, and try to educate people. And, um, and and get them uh, scheduled to line up for the for the for the booster. You know, a lot of places now are requiring for COVID vaccine. You know, uh, especially you can see a lot of university in the state are required to have the COVID vaccine uh, for you to attend school there. You know, so um, I know my daughter. Uh, she's gonna go to Loyola, and and that's a requirement. You know, just like the medical cotton vaccine. So. Um, and, and some business um, will will mandate uh, the requirement if you have a lot of face to face with customer service. Uh, so um, I we we will have to plan like yesterday. Yeah, that that was a comment in here. I thought they were planning already, and I just commented, "LOL." <laughs> yeah, just, just on the private side, we plan, out, but um, on the public side, so we have to really. Uh, on the private clinic should be partnered with um, uh, public health and, and try to come up with um, a plan how to immunize um, the rest of the island. Yeah. There's a lot of people and you have to approach it systematically or if not, it's going to be a mess. Right. Yeah. I mean, we have to give the government a break because uh, they get paid more than the private sector. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be annual. It's going to be more like the start of December, Chris. So. I will get mine more likely in December for the booster. What does the data say, Doc? Like, let's say, you know, I, I got vaccinated, but the year comes, I don't get the booster. Am I coming um, in hot for COVID or what? Like, is there any yeah, science on that? Yeah, more likely your immune system will um, come down and, um, uh, and you will have the level of protection that you wish. Um, you know, data out there is, there's truly no firm um, data on how long the protection is. It's anywhere from three months to a year. Um, you know, just like right now, the CDC guideline that if you are fully vaccinated and you come in close contact with someone positive, uh, you don't, for the first 90 days after you vaccinated, uh, fully vaccinated, you don't have to be 
quarantine or you don't have to be testing at all. You don't have to do anything at all. So, but it's only a 90 days window. So the question is uh, what happens after that 90 days? Wow. Uh, Physicians advisory group, what has uh, the discussion uh, been like uh, with you guys? You know, right now our main um, discussion is um, um, how to go forward um, um, before the, the liberation day. You know, we we are talking about you know from when to relax the quarantine further, who uh, when to the we can safely um, the, the, somehow discontinue the uh, the quarantine facility for people, for incoming passenger. Uh, those are just Discussion we that we talk about and what's the trigger point? Um, if we had to reconsider anything, if we have a surge, um, you know, what's the surge criteria? You know, right, the, the um, positive rate or the hospital admission, what's the number? So those are we have to talk ahead of time uh, and and try to uh, come up with some, some plan. Because this thing is you know really we can't predict. Um, what will be in the next you note know, um week or or, or, or months that um what can happen you know so uh, those are discussions that we had to talk about and and we will talk about uh, tonight to to make sure that when can we move the new guideline um in the next few weeks how would you further ease uh quarantine you know at a certain point when you have a uh, certain percentage of of um, population vaccine, you know, you um, just have to um, to not quarantine people in the hotel, but you can require quarantine at home, um, you know, um, and, and just so for, especially unvaccinated person, you know, you just have to require them to do PCR testing prior to arrival and, and home quarantine rather than hotel quarantine. Wow. So you're um, saying that the way that you guys would ease the quarantine is is currently if you're not vaccinated you go into the hotel but you guys want to change it so if you're not vaccinated to come with a negative test go to home quarantine yes uh once you have a certain um, percentage of the population vaccinated rate, especially adult um uh, probably 18 plus you know um you have to kind of um open the island and 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 uh, and uh, somewhat allow people to to do, do home quarantine because remember the purpose of the of the vaccination it makes it so it's safe for the community and then also to decrease the the risks and the number of people uh, being hospitalized and and that's the key as you see right now we um, passed the uh, the current quarantine guideline um, I guess um, in mid uh, mid May or something, but so far, you know, the, the hospital admission is not that bad, and also the positive rate is not that bad. So, um, we take one step at a time, and um, in order for us to to safely evaluate something, and we need to have about two cycles of the virus, which is um, one month to make sure that the positive rate and the hospital admission is, is not going through the roof. And so far, uh, it has been doing very well, right. So no cause for concern that we just had 14 positive cases uh, yesterday. Yeah, you know, from um, Sabrina, I mean, we're going to have some positive rate out there as we relax the quarantine. You can see in the restaurant, in the gathering, there's a lot more people out there. But uh, again, the majority of us uh, have been fully vaccinated. You know, I think we are about um, 63 or 64 percent fully vaccinated, adult 18 and over. You know, so you can see that even you have positive um, um, you know, positivity out there, uh, you don't have that many people in the hospital. Uh, and that's the key, you know, um, the, again, the people in the hospital are, are just some um, unvaccinated persons and, and that's their choice. So um, we just try to encourage people to get vaccinated so we don't have to be in the hospital as much as possible. I think when we had you on, I'm not sure if you guys brought it up earlier about this whole QR code uh, program. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? Yeah. Uh, is there an update is, on this? Yeah, the QR code are, are on time, and uh, 
Um, right now, we um, are working with different private entity um, and also present to um, to GVP and discuss on the, on how to roll it out. Uh, it's very simple. It's basically, you know, it's um, you don't have to walk around piece of paper for verification. It's on your it's on your phone. It tell you if you fully vaccinated or not, and also at um, toward the uh, the one month or so before um, your vaccination expire, it will kind of ping your phone and send you an SMS message to remind you that hey, it's time for the booster um, to come on. And there's different incentives that the business side of the house try to do uh, on the restaurant, a business retail store that can give the people on that to have the QR code that show to them that they're fully vaccinated. Um, you can use that for travel. Um, and uh, you can include your, your last COVID testing out there also on the platform. So it's pretty convenient for people to to go forward. You know, it's all digital. And again, you, know, you don't, don't have to worry about lose a piece of paper or carry a piece of paper around with you because everyone have their cell phone with them. So uh, that's the purpose of QR codes. So it's, it's on time. So it's supposed to be rolled out sometime mid-June. Uh, at this point, so you know, June 15, the question is, how do we roll out without getting overwhelmed? Right. When are you going to travel, Doc? Um, I'm going to take my daughter to the college at uh, the end of June, so, um, so I have to, to do some travel. And talk about travel, I mean, um, no, yes, sir. I, I kind of listened to, I'm not sure who's talking, but, you know, um, I know that last night Janela was saying that the um, public health is overwhelmed with travel clearance, you know, PCR testing. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there. I know even in the internet that that um, uh, it's not very clear. Uh, even in the United, um, the website is not very clear. But I just want to tell people that unless you go to Hawaii and stay in Hawaii for a day or two, that Hawaii will require you to have a PCR testing. Um, but if you just transit mm -hmm. from Guam through Hawaii, even through Narita, that you don't need the PCR testing. Mm -hmm. So save your money and save your headache, mm -hmm. you know. I keep telling people that, and when they come back to Ireland, say, yes, doctor, you're right. I don't need it. Yeah. Absolutely, you don't need it. So the only time that you need the PCR testing is if you're going to stay in Hawaii. If you're going to transit, there's a website there that you can sign up ahead of time and let that, and they give you a QR code or, or confirmation that tells Hawaii that you just transit. And if you do that, you don't have to waste your money nor your time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, don't, don't overwhelm uh, public health or or you want to pay the clinic. No, you can do that, but you're wasting your money. So I just want to, to make it clear. I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of confusion in the internet when you, when you call United, um, you know, the 800 line. No, I don't think the people online know that Guam is U.S. territory. Mm -hmm. We are not foreign country. So they're going to tell you that you're gonna need the PCR testing, but you don't you don't need it. Yeah. So I just want to let people know that you know don't spend so much time on all your money to do that. Yeah, you got to let people know that, especially the people in the media. I know, so that's why I say you know, we gotta get the message out that yeah, just some um, like I say, you don't need for transiting, and none yeah. of the United States. Um, so, um, uh, any state that require you to show a PCR testing before you come in. Now, if you come from international flight, uh, they might ask you, but you can tell them, hey, I'm just transiting. I'm not staying in, in Japan. I'm not staying in Korea. I'm not, no, but international flight, um, yes, the U.S. Um, and the U.S. territory in the United States require you to have some type of PCR testing or antigen testing before you arrive on U.S. soil. Um, but if you're transiting, you don't have to, okay? Right. It costs a lot. 
anywhere 150 to 200 dollars to do the test and you waste your money been there done that doc that he yeah. is absolutely correct yeah yeah uh, doc you know like let's say you're gonna go to las vegas right would you need yeah, a negative hypothetically. Would, would, i mean just you know totally unrelated to anything that's going on with anybody i know in this studio named sabrina <laughs> but if you were going to go to las vegas would you need a negative test coming from guam uh, you don't need it okay. uh, yeah. Uh, again, sign up on the on online. So if you go through Hawaii, there's a website there. You put, you say that you transit, and they don't require you to do a PCR testing. Okay. okay. You can go to New York. You can mm -hmm. go to Louisiana. You can go anywhere. What about Las and Vegas? You don't. Even like, you don't need <laughs> it. Okay, so you don't need one if you're going yes. to Las Vegas. Yes. Okay. Pop I transited through dollars. Denver. You don't need it. You, you know. don't need it in Denver either. No. Okay. On the way back, Japan, no, right. because you're just transiting. <laughs> so, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. Jer Jerry Thank Flores so comments in, Doc. We hear so much conflicting information. She's right because you know, I mean, <laughs> I did. So the first time I went to Vegas, yeah. I had called United, asking what are the requirements. Do I need a negative COVID test before? You know, I get into Hawaii. And then she made me call United. Right. Because the first person told me, oh, yes, right? And then I was like, wait a minute. So I called back again like several hours later, and then I was on the line for a while, and they said, no, because you are U.S. territory. You don't need yes. the negative uh, test because you're transiting. So I asked Jason, hey, can you call United <laughs> just to make sure <laughs> for like a third time? Yeah. And it was the same thing. You do not need uh, that negative. Yes, yeah. Oh. Sabrina thought they were just telling her she needed it because she's Sabrina. No. Trying to give her a hard time. <laughs> no, no, no. So save money, okay? So money is important. So no, spend your uh, money. Boost the economy. <laughs> you can buy something else. Yeah. And uh, it is. Yeah, it is about $200. What yeah. about, Doc, um, the uh, vaccine verification uh, printout, right? Because you can get it from public health. And I know that when we had Chima on, he also said, oh, goodness, so many people are calling. You know, it's summer. People are traveling. Um, you only need that vaccine verification printout if it's required in the jurisdiction that you're traveling to, the destination, correct? Do you know what destinations require this vaccine verification form? None. The only one that requires side cam, okay? okay? If you go to the United States, you don't require the verification. If you go to SciCan, yes, they require it, but that's the, um, that's the requirement. But, you know, so uh, no, don't call your G. You know, they overwhelm, and most of my patients, they call, and no one answer anyway. Oh, okay, so. no way, Doc. So the thing wait, here is hold that, a no, sec, no, Doc. Wait, yeah. you're, you're saying that there's people who are calling the OG call center, which was set up because we didn't have enough people to answer the phones at public health? But when people call the UOG call center, which was set up because we don't have people to answer the phones of public health, no one's answering the yeah. phone? It's, it's like a six line, and this is, you, you go through the six line. Mm. So the only time that you really need the verification, if you travel, just like Sabrina say, to a jurisdiction, jurisdiction that requires right now, is only side cam. If you go to the United States, anywhere in the state, you do not to have to need a letter. And if when you come back to Guam, you don't need the letter of verification. You know, when public health decided they're going to put, you know, a whole bunch of people in the airport to check through the web IZ. You know, so it's a, it's a slow process. But again, uh, they check online already. You don't need to show up with a piece of paper. Mm. So, um, you know, um, if, um, if you have a lot more time, just do something else. But you don't have to go up there and pick it up and, and you end up losing anyway. So um, I, I wouldn't do that unless you go to site camp. They need a new manager up there at the OG call center. I mean, it's like you literally have one job to answer the phone. No, it's very hard, Chris. I mean, you have, um, you know, uh, 100,000 people on the island and you try to call six number, you're not going to get through. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that's something that um, they should put the message out that, only yeah. if yeah. able to yeah. and, well, I mean, and not just a letter for anything else. Doc, that's the case with every government agency. Yeah. So um so don't don't get it unless you go to Saipan, guys. You don't need it. Okay. Okay. Um uh, unless no um that letter 
um, is some, you know, what we try to do is very important for us to get our immunization up to you know, 75, 80% by Liberation Day. You, we really need to incentivize people to get the, the, the other 10% of our population to go out and vaccinate it. That's the hardest part. And this is where all the incentive that they put out there um, at the business level, the restaurant, retailer, or, or um, you know, whatever the government can do to incentivize people to get vaccinated, you know, maybe the letter come in play that, hey, you know, I'm vaccinated, you know, so that way you can have some discount somewhere. But that's something that um, that you might need. Um, I don't know what the business required, but, um, but you, you, know, you don't need the letter of verification. So um, uh, don't don't bother to do that either. Okay, so, so do you need a letter of verification? Yeah, okay. you don't need it. Well, if you're okay. going to so, Saipan, right? Yeah. Then you might need it. Yes. Go if you're going to Saipan, like, hide all your guam tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. So may, like maybe we'll come up with a jingle, right? So like yeah. about when you need the letter of verification. Six seven zero. Yeah. Oh, otherwise, no. There you go. Yes. And Saipan come to Guam, we do the same. We require a verification, so Saipan will have a letter too. Right so uh, just vice versa, okay? And just um, for people, just so you know, if you are going to Saipan, even if you're fully vaccinated and you have your letter of verification, that $400 entrance fee It's is, cut. When did you text I, Kevin? I texted Kevin yesterday. Afternoon? Because uh, he told on. me they were still working on it. When did he tell you that? Yesterday morning. No, oh, stand by, Bree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is 1130. Um, he said, yes, $400 fee should be off the books now. Okay. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the update, Chris. Sorry. I'm I didn't know. I'm okay. sorry. Hey, don't get, you don't need a negative test if you're going to Las Vegas, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And, and you Kevin, know, one you know. the message sorry. I want to pass out is that, you know, well, I was texting on a personal year. capacity. Bruce. Yeah. Uh, next school year starts in August and we really need to have the children vaccinated as much as possible. Um, you know, we are trying to um, decide to see is that um, okay for the children to don't have that three feet distance in the school, in the yeah. classroom. Yeah. So that way um, the, every student can go to school. Uh, but the only way we can do that is at least 80% of the children have to be fully vaccinated. So now they're gonna have a lot of outreach for the children during the summer, the next uh, two months. Um, so if you, you know, please get your, your children out there and don't wait for the last minute, because remember the Pfizer take three weeks uh, apart, the first right, dose, right, second yeah. dose. So, uh, you know, don't wait till July to get it because um, you'll be late for school. So I would say that um, uh, this uh, June, um, just throughout the month of June, there's a lot of outreach uh, please get your children out there uh, to get vaccinated. Just like we have um, Father doing us, um, I think next, um, Friday. next Friday. Yeah, yeah. You know, so remember, you're gonna take three weeks. So the first week of July or so, that's when you get your uh, your second shot. So it takes time. So don't. It's not one shot deal. So don't wait to the last minute now. So Doc. please get out there and get your children vaccinated. We had a okay? question just to go to go back and verify if you're going to Hawaii and staying for a day or so, you need a negative PT, PCR test. Yeah, right. Uh, yes. Right. If you stay in Hawaii. Um, and then we have another comment here from Maria Sablon Harris. I was told multiple times that the verification process speeds up the process at the airport. Is that true? We don't know because we can't go in that part of the airport. Yeah, yeah that's what they you're going to have a line uh, for verification. So I guess if you have the letter, then you can show they don't have to look in the web IC. Uh, mm -hmm. But you're going to have one line for them for verification. So it's all the manual process. So they, they have to to either look at your verification letter or they, uh, they're they going to look at your name on the web IC, either one. Okay. Well, Doc, thank you for your time. When are you going? Um, June 27, but you know, I'm mean, uh, going to still do a lot of Zoom meeting from the state, so it's not a truly a vacation. So. <laughs> right on. Well, well, congratulations to your family, Doc. Oh, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. But please get immunized, and 
I'm going to try to see if public health will release a bit more information on the positive. Well, we're getting... so regarding, I always say it's important yeah. for people to know that out of the positive, um, all the positive, how many people are partially vaccinated, yeah. fully vaccinated, or vaccinated. It's kind of important for people to know. Well, so far, that information is not out there yet, but they should release those. Yes, well, we're getting Chima on a little bit. Doc, just real quick, is everyone vaccinated at private clinics or DOD all entered into the public health web IZ? Everyone that, now, uh, DOD is different. They have different uh, systems, okay. so okay. I'm sure they're going to put a web IZ, but all the private clinic, uh, all the pharmacy um, are required to input all the vaccination in the web IZ. Okay, thank you, Doc. You're welcome, guys. Have God a good bless. day. Okay? Be safe. Yeah. Right on a quick break, and we're coming back on KUAM TV next. We got your six. At 6 a.m. with the link on Breeze 93.9 FM. Bree and I connect you with all the latest news and information you need to know to start your day. Then check back with Guam's news leader.